Welcome to Money Matters, sponsored by Evergreen Credit Union. Managing your finances during a crisis. Evergreen Credit Union has seven professionals on their financial education team. During this period of uncertainty, they've made their financial education programs available to anyone virtually. No matter what each of us are going through, managing finances in a crisis is new to all of us. It's a good idea to stop and to take some time to plan how you will spend your money over the next several months. This week, we'll discuss credit scores and how you can optimize your score. I'm Brenda Pollock, a certified financial counselor with Evergreen Credit Union. Evergreen invested in a financial wellness program three years ago. Since then, we've helped hundreds of people better manage their personal finances by showing them how to create a budget, understand credit scores, manage their debt, and set some personal financial goals. We're committed to this program, and we offer it for free. This week, we'll discuss credit scores and how you can optimize your score. Let's talk credit scores. A credit score is a three-digit number between 300 and 850 that relates to how likely you are to repay debt. Lenders use it to decide whether they'll approve someone for a credit card or a loan or to set a rate of interest on a specific loan. The higher your score, the lower the interest you'll pay. Because you can have a different credit score from each credit bureau, it is best to focus on the credit range you fall in. Excellent, good, fair, needs work, or poor. We'll also discuss best ways to boost your score and what FICO scores are. Phew, that's a lot to digest, but let's get started and see if we can make it a bit clearer for you to navigate this complicated and somewhat confusing credit score number. What is a credit score? In the early days of credit for consumers, character-based decision-making was part of the process. A customer's score was assessed using credit information about an individual's social, political, or personal life habits. In the 1950s, Bill Fair, an engineer, and Earl Isaac, a mathematician, created an automated scoring system that became known as the FICO score. They sold their fairer system of a consumer's credit score to banks and retailers in the U.S. and around the world. The Fair Credit Reporting Act was passed in 1970, creating a regulated system regarding what information about a consumer would be collected, what would be reported, and for how long that information would remain on a credit report. It also stated how consumers could obtain copies of the reports. Who manages all this information? The big three, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. They collect and maintain data about your financial life that is contained in your credit report. They also use this data to assign you a credit score. Your score can affect everything from your odds of approval for credit cards to the interest rates you're going to pay for loans. Credit scores play a huge role in your life and can impact many areas of your life, from jobs to family to relationships and more. Your credit score can impact your life in ways you haven't considered. Here's how those credit bureaus track many of your financial transactions and rate you. Payment history accounts for 35% of your score. Even one late payment could lower your score significantly and it could remain on your credit report for up to seven years. 30% of your score is related to credit card and loan balances. You really need to pay attention to your overall credit limits for every loan or credit card. Add up all of the balances. If your amount owed is greater than 30% of your overall credit limit, your credit score will drop. 
staying below that 30% threshold is the only way you will keep your score up. If you're aiming for an 800 credit score, paying off your debt each month or owing no more than 10% of your credit limit will help you get there. Utilization. Too much is certain to keep your score down. Length of credit history accounts for 15% of your score. So when paying off debt, such as a credit card, for example, don't close out your cards. Put them away. Take them out every so often and make a small purchase. Then pay it off with the money you've already allocated for this purchase. This practice will help show that you have long credit history, something that helps keep your interest rates down. Accounting for 10% of your score are types of credit and new credit. A variety of credit types is best. Exactly how much types of credit are factored into the credit score is unknown, but here are a few common truths that we do know. Having a mix of credit echoes you're financially responsible. You pose as less of a credit risk because you're demonstrating an ability to manage different types of credit and the payments associated with each. Be careful of the number of accounts you open within a 12-month period. Also, be mindful of how many potential lenders have checked your credit. If you're applying for a large loan such as a mortgage, avoid opening smaller accounts beforehand. Since FICO scores were introduced to lenders over 25 years ago, they have become the best known and the most widely used credit score. But quite a bit has changed since lenders first started using FICO scores in 1989. There are multiple FICO score versions available in addition to the most widely used version, FICO score number eight. It is also important to realize that the FICO methodology has been updated several times throughout the years in an effort to do the best job possible predicting consumer credit behavior. Lenders have historically been slow to upgrade to the latest FICO versions. FICO score 9 has been in existence for several years now, and most recently, FICO introduced version 10. Version 9 made some pretty significant changes to the FICO score. Specifically, paid-off collections no longer have a negative impact. Medical collections are treated more favorably than other types. And rental history can be a factor in the score if it's reported. Version 10 will treat late payments and credit card debt more severely and will also consider historical information about credit card balances and payment amounts. So in addition to the three credit bureaus, there are rather different versions of the FICO score that could potentially be used when assessing your credit risk. Know your number. Using a credit app like Credit Karma, for example, is a safe way to keep track of your number. It may not reflect your true number. However, if there is a change up or down, you'll be notified. And checking your number on an app such as Credit Karma does not negatively affect your credit score. If you really want to increase your score, pay attention to payment history and credit utilization. That accounts for 65% of your credit score. Now, Let's look at some ways you could potentially help to boost your credit score. Don't close unused credit cards. Keeping unused credit cards open as long as they're not costing you money in annual fees is a smart strategy because closing an account may increase your credit utilization ratio. Owing the same amount but having fewer open accounts may lower your credit scores and keeping them open will increase your credit history. Apply for new credit only when needed. Don't open accounts just to have a better credit mix. It probably won't improve your credit score. Unnecessary credit can hurt your credit score in multiple ways, from creating too many hard inquiries on your credit report to tempting to overspend and accumulate debt ensuring you are using a mix of credit types wisely. Generally, 
Your credit mix is more important if your credit report doesn't have a lot of other information on which to base your score. Now let's take a look at some of the different types of credit. For example, revolving credit. This type of credit is open-ended. When you borrow, you'll agree to repay a certain amount each month, but you won't be expected to repay all the money by a definite date. Instead, you'll be able to carry the balance and borrow more up to the limit each month. The longer the principal of the debt remains unpaid, the more interest you'll pay on it. Credit cards are the most common form of revolving credit. Charge cards. They look and work much like credit cards, but with charge cards, you have to pay the balance in full each month. Service credit. Anyone who provides you with a service and bills you in arrears after you've received the goods or services is extending service credit to you. This type of credit includes your utility companies, your landlord, mobile phone provider, and so on. Each month, you pay an agreed upon amount. While this kind of credit doesn't typically appear on credit reports, if you fail to pay your bills on time, these creditors could report the late payments to the credit bureaus or send the account to a collection agency that reports late payments, causing the negative information to appear on your credit report and harm your credit score. Installment credit. This is the kind of credit most people typically think of as loans. If you have a mortgage or a car loan, it's an installment credit. It's probably the most commonly used and easiest form of credit to understand. You borrow a specific amount from the lender and agree to repay it with an interest in installments of a specific amount over the life of the loan, usually ranging from months to years. Credit can be a powerful tool to help you achieve your financial goals. It's important to have a budget, be disciplined, and understand how credit scores work, how to build your credit, and how to ensure your credit history always works for you. When is the last time that you looked, I mean really looked at the information about you on your credit report? Annualcreditreport.com will provide you with a credit report from each of the three credit bureaus. So exactly what is it you're looking for on your credit report? First, make sure everything on the report is about you. Check for inaccurate or incomplete information, accounts that don't belong to you, addresses of places that you may have lived you don't recognize, employees that you have worked for and or not worked for, information that should no longer be on your credit report, such as negative information that occurred more than seven years ago. Bankruptcy filings. Each major credit bureau keeps this information on your report for 10 years. By law, the bureaus, also known as credit reporting agencies, can provide information about you and about your credit worthiness to many types of businesses. This all may seem a little overwhelming, but here's a great way to attack your credit report. Year one, pull all three reports, make sure they're accurate, dispute anything that doesn't look right. Keep all your records for each dispute in one file. Every year thereafter, pull one report every four months. This will help ensure you are on top of your credit report each year and detect possible identity theft more readily. Did you know who could potentially look at your credit score? Or what's the difference between a hard pull and a soft pull, also known as hard hit or hard inquiries, or soft pulls and soft inquiries? Financial institutions, banks, and credit unions. Every time they look at your credit, it's a hard pull or a hard inquiry. 
Every time you go to a retail store and you're tempted to apply for their line of credit with their 35% off incentive if you apply now, that generates a hard hit or a hard inquiry. Be leery of how many of these opportunities you're going to take. Don't be tempted by too many of these offers. Too many hits will hurt your score. If you'd like to get a credit increase on your card, call your credit card company and ask them if they're able to extend your credit limit without a hard pull. Remember, keep an eye on your big financial picture and do what's best for you. Any major purchase, such as a mortgage or an auto loan, will generate another hard pull. You typically approve a hard hit to your credit report when you apply for any loan or credit card. A hard inquiry could lower your scores by a few points, or it may have a negative effect on your score. In most cases, a single hard inquiry is unlikely to play a huge role in whether you're approved for a new credit card or a loan. Hard pulls will remain on your credit report for two years. Soft pulls or soft inquiries are requested from employers, volunteer groups, government agencies, landlords, payment processors, debt buyers and collectors, insurance companies, telecommunications companies, and utility providers. The notion that multiple credit reporting agencies are keeping tabs on your spending might seem like an invasion of privacy and maybe dangerous, especially after the massive Equifax data breach and a recent series of other high publicized data breaches. With all that said, there is no practical way to avoid having your transactions documented. Whether you're just getting started or getting back on track, knowing how your credit score is calculated and how you can manage your score will save you money in the long run. Thank you for watching Money Matters, sponsored by Evergreen Credit Union. Join us next week as we discuss debt, managing and reducing your debt. From everyone on Evergreen's financial education team, I'm Brenda Pollock. Thank you for watching.